Hi, welcome everyone to Advanced Software Engineering. Today I'm going to give you just a brief overview of what this entire course entails. We have mainly two areas that we're going to talk about. One of them is project management and the other one is specific software qualities. For so let me just start with writing that title up here. So we're just going to split this in two. We're going to start with the project management. And save the second half for the software qualities. So when we talk about project management, that means I need to get an understanding for a couple of things. I need to get an understanding of who my customers are for a specific project and what type of constraints this project brings with it. There is a bunch of project characteristics that we can talk about here. So for example, is this in-house development or is this product development that I'm going to try and sell out on an open market? I can have a new customer that I have to deal with or I can have an established partnership that's been running for years or I can not quite know yet who my customers are, in which case I would probably want to conduct some user studies to understand better which audience I'm aiming at. Once I've understood those project characteristics, I'm going to try and find a development process that goes along with that. And so while project management is a set of activities that will accompany us all over the project or during the entire course of the project. We have a couple of phases in the process, starting with requirements engineering, continuing to design, and then to implementation, to testing, to deployment, and then from the deployment we'll go into evolution cycles, evolution and maintenance. And all along the way, project management accompanies us. Part of project management is to find out which metrics can we use to help us understand when a project is running well and when we may have to intervene. So one of the chapters we'll talk about this semester is project metrics. Another one that we'll talk about is the use of these metrics, because one of the things that we definitely need them for is to do project estimation. At the beginning, when you talk to your customer, they may have this really weird idea of wanting to know how much development is going to cost. So therefore, we need to understand what goes into decent project estimation. But not only for that are metrics really good. Metrics are also going to help us to understand how to best schedule a project. So project scheduling is another chapter that we'll visit. And then the next thing that we will need those metrics for is risk management, because we can plan as perfectly as we want to. I assure you, stuff's going to happen. Things are not going to go quite as you thought they would. So therefore, we have to get an understanding of how to do risk management. And then last but not least, this innocuous arrow down here that says evolution and maintenance Turns out that for many software projects, more than 50% of the costs go into the evolution and maintenance phase. So therefore, we should take some time and look into that as well. So maintenance of software over time. That's what we're going to be doing for the first half of the course. Now, when we have all this project management stuff down, you probably already have some basic understanding of what the functionality of a software system is and how we may proceed in implementing that using such a generic process of software development. When it comes to software qualities, 
some of that may deserve some additional explanation. So we will look into a couple of specific examples. And you will see that we can find some patterns in how we deal with those qualities that we can reuse across all chapters. So the one that we're going to start with is dependability. Dependability means I can, I can trust the software system. It's almost like in a relationship. Dependability is composed by a number of things. It has to do with reliability, safety, security, availability. If you want to work with a software system and maybe your business depends on it, you want to know that that thing is reliable. If it frequently doesn't show up, if you thought you had a date with that person and they just leave you hanging yet again, you're probably not going to continue to trust them. Kind of the same thing for software systems. So dependability has a number of sub-characteristics that we'll be looking into. First one is availability. If the software system's down, there's not much we can do. Next one is reliability. So when we work with a software system and it receives a specific input, and then it calculates something for us and we get an output back, we would expect that we get the same return for similar inputs every single time. That's part of what reliability means. In addition, when I have a reliable system, it's available, it's reliable. What else do I really care about? I would want to know it's not going to kill me or not going to cause any other type of harm. And that's what we call safety and safety engineering. So we will spend a couple of lessons on that. Closely, relate, uh, closely related to safety is security. We can also say that security is kind of a precondition to even get to safety. Because if somebody can tamper with the system, then I won't be able to guarantee the safety of the system. So security is worth digging into as well. And then we can take all the protective measures that we want in the world. We can install firewalls. We can have great cryptography. We can have super safe algorithms. Maybe there is still one really, really smart hacker out there who still manages to run a cyber attack on our system. And there are a couple of attacks that are really hard to protect against. For example, a denial of service attack where we just send so many requests to a software system from very different places that the server can just not handle a load at some point anymore. In that case, we still don't want everything to fall to pieces. We want to kind of limit the damage. We want to be able to recover from that as quickly as we can. And that is what is summarized under the quality characteristic of resilience. So resilience of a system means we know we can't protect ourselves effectively against everything that could ever occur. Therefore, we're going to assume eventually some things are going to go wrong. If that is the case, we want to be able to identify them early, to limit the damage, and to recover as quickly as possible. That's for the part of the software qualities. So all of this is what we're going to be dealing with in this course.